Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, the, in the Qur'an, he speaks uh, directly to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says to him, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُكٍ عَظِيمٍ That indeed, you are uh, upon magnificent character. That the khuluk of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is عظيم, uh, which means just something that is beyond our imagination. Uh, more than anything we can possibly think of is the khuluk, the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is important for us to understand what is this great character of the Prophet sallallahu How did he interact uh, with uh, his family members, uh, with his wives, uh, even with his enemies? Uh, there's a verse in the Quran which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَسْوِ الْحَسَنَاتِ وَلَا سَيِّئَاتِ إِتَفَعْبِ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنِ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيُّ الْحَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, um, good and evil are not equal. Repel evil with something that is better. Or repel evil with something that is beautiful. And then you will see the one between you and him was adawa, which means like hatred or enmity. He was your adu, your enemy. He will become, as it were, your intimate companion and friend. Right? That the, the khuluk of the Prophet وسلم, has this power to transform people from hating him to loving him. Amr ibn al As radiallahu anhu, on his deathbed, he said to his son Abdullah, he said, he said, My dear son, there was a time when I hated the Prophet وسلم, uh, so much that I went out against him in many of these battles, I was trying to kill him. And then there was a time when I loved the Prophet وسلم, so much, I couldn't even look at him in his face because I was overawed by him. And if you ask me right now to describe him, I couldn't even do it. Because after I became Muslim, I couldn't even bring myself to look at him in his face. Right? And Ahmad ibn al-As one time, he said that he went to the Prophet sallallahu Because when he became Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu showed him so much uh, mahabba. Right? So Ahmad ibn al-As, he thought to himself that I am the most beloved person to the Prophet sallallahu because this is how the Prophet ﷺ made you feel. He made you feel very important, very honored, uh, very dignified. So he said to himself, I must be the most beloved person. You know, it's, it's obvious. So he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah, ayyun nas ahabbu ilayk. O Messenger of God, who do you love the most amongst the people? And he expected the Prophet ﷺ to say, it's obvious, it's you. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Aisha, his wife, mashallah, he loved his wife. This is extremely important. And people, as my father said, people attack the Prophet ﷺ for various reasons. And many times, Allahu alam, but many times, don't think that this is motivated by some kind of sincere academic inquiry. A lot of these people have ulterior motives, right? Either they are militant liberals, or they're extreme feminists, or they're part of, you know, the circus with the many colors, you know, they're, they're clowns in the circus. So they attack the Prophet Sallallahu These are the real motives, right? And it comes out, and these people are mustahzim, right? The Quran talks about these people. These are people who mock and denigrate the Prophet And we should not give these people any kind of platform. This is extremely important. Don't invite them to your, uh, you know, your podcasts. Don't put them on TV, especially if they're not willing to show their faces. These people are cowards, not using their real names. If you're going to say something about the Prophet be a man, let me see your face. What's your name, right? But these people, we should not give them platforms. And the Prophet Sallallahu was ordered by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala not to even engage with the mustahzi'un. People who denigrate the Prophet Sallallahu Allah tells them, Inna kafaynaka al-mustahzi'in. I am sufficient for you against the mustahzi'in. Don't even engage with them. Engage with people uh, that have genuine, uh, you know, sincerity in the religion, that are asking good questions. 
not pointed questions, not drawing these conclusions that are slanderous, that are denigrating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will defend the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's nothing anyone could say in reality that can insult the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has raised him, رَفَعَنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ When Allah raises someone, nobody can debase him. Nobody can debase him. Right? So we should pray for people, pray for their guidance. Right? Uh, but we should know that he is Habibullah, he is the most beloved of God. So what is the wisdom behind this? Our mother Aisha, radiallahu anha, you know, the, the Ummahat al-Mu'mineen, they don't get married after the passing of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa She did not get married after him. And she had no children. So what was she doing? She was teaching the Sunnah for 55 years. Five and a half decades. She was a fountain of knowledge. Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha, radiallahu anha. Into her 70s, from age 18 to 73, she's full-time teacher, Mufti, one of the seven or eight Sahaba that gave fatwa. This is the wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used our mother Aisha as a means of preserving his religion. We have a wife of the Prophet someone who's in the house. This is someone that has access to the Prophet that nobody, no male companion has. Imagine how much information and knowledge Details of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. That's why the Sahaba would go to her. She, she relates the hadith. What do we get these hadith from? Where do we get a third of our religion from? There's great wisdom in this. For five and a half decades, she's teaching the religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was someone in the year 60 Hijrah who is a Sahabi, our mother Aisha, who is teaching the Sunnah. This is the wisdom behind People don't see the wisdom. Because people have, they're looking at the world through their own diseases. Right? If you have cataracts in your eyes, and you're seeing everything yellow, you don't blame me for being yellow. Because what's wrong with you? Why are you yellow? No, the disease is in your own eyes. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing the world through your diseases. Right? So we should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he will take care of these people who are mocking his happy. Rest assured about this. Don't platform these people. You know, if, if there's a fitna in the community, then we should have an alim who will address these issues. But don't let the masses hear these, these, in, these insults and, and wrong conclusions. People who don't know what they're talking about. People who have an axe to grind. Why do they have an axe to grind? Because the Quran is true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, it is he who has sent his messenger with truth and the deen al-haq, the religion of truth, that it may supersede all other religions. Islam is the only real religion left in the world. Look around the world. You go to a church at random, it's the circus. Where is your morality? Where is your tradition? What happened? You have the Pope saying weird things. Go to a synagogue. They're eating pork. They're not praying. They're, 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 they're engaging in uh, all kinds of yani, shaitanic practices. What happened to your religion? Because the, re the religions of the world right now, basically, is just militant liberalism with a veneer of religion. That's the, that's the base religion. A militant type of liberalism. Woke liberalism with just a, a, a very light coating of Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism. But Islam is the only deen left. And people see that. People are noticing that. And this bothers them, because Islam is the barrier, according to them, to them being able to propagate the worship of the nafs, their own hawa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran to the Prophet sallallahu and by extension to all of us, do you see the one who takes his own hawa, his own nafs, his own desires, his own caprice as his ilah, as his God? Right? This is a very, very common form, common type of idolatry in the world. Right? So the Prophet وسلم, no one can debase him. One of the poets said, these people are like dogs barking at the moon. 
Does does the barkings of the does the barking of the dogs on the earth affect the moon as it passes through the sky? No, it has no effect whatsoever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defends his Prophet. We should be able to articulate these things. The Prophet does not need us to defend him. Right? Allah will defend him. But so defending him is only for our benefit. He doesn't benefit Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? But if there's a fitna in the community, we have to be able to communicate to people and, and bring ulama who have studied these things to clarify these issues for the people. This is very, very important. You know, very, very important. Even to put things in perspective. I speak to a I used to debate Christian. I still debate them a little bit. These Christians, right? And one of them, this is very common. They say, he, the Prophet said, he can't be a prophet because he engaged in wars. He engaged in wars. What are you talking about? Have you read the Bible? Musa alayhi salam engaged in... No, he, he doesn't. It says in the Torah, it's in every Christian Bible, Musa alayhi salam, when he was coming down from Turi Sinin, Har Sinai, and he sees his people worshipping the Ejid, the calf, according to the Torah, he ordered 3,000 men killed in one day. In one day, 3,000 men. Now, if you look at the Ghazawat of the Prophet ﷺ, in 23 years, how many people were killed in these battles? 1,017 or 1,015. It's different to opinion, 1,030, something like this. And all of the military, and these were all men on the battlefield. Men against men on the battlefield, fighting like men, you know. <clears throat> Not like modern warfare, where they drop bombs on innocent men, men women, and children. 200,000 people killed in an atomic blast, right? These, these things are completely haram. Those things are barbaric, completely haram according to our sharia. So we should know the way of the Prophet ﷺ. His teaching is a teaching for the intelligent ones, for the people who think, for the people of faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guide us to the truth May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to clarify these issues um, for the next coming generation. Because this is becoming difficult for a lot of young people, right? Especially in high school, university setting. Because these philosophies, these postmodern philosophies, this type of wokeism, this type of militant liberalism, this is the the zeitgeist, like the general sort of spirit of the age, is the most prevalent type of philosophy uh, in colleges and universities. And Muslim children enter into these places and they don't know how to deal with these things. Right? Because the teaching in these places is that there is no ultimate truth. There's no such thing as ultimate truth. There's no such thing as objective morality. Right? They say, how dare you have an opinion about morality, which is ironic, because they have an opinion. That's their opinion. There's no such thing as ultimate truth. That in and of itself is an expression of ultimate truth. The whole thing is a big contradiction. The whole thing is convoluted. The whole thing is false. Okay, so the, my final advice is, a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, advice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not my advice. He's giving you his advice. A man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, قُلْ لِي فِي الْإِسْلَامِ قَوْلًا لَا أَسْأَلُ عَنْهُ أَحَدًا غَيْرَكَ Tell me something about Islam that only you can tell me. Give me like something special. And the Prophet Sallallahu response was very short, right? But very comprehensive. Qul amantu billah thummastaqim. Say, I believe in Allah and be steadfast and upright upon that. Have istiqamah in the religion. Istiqamah in the religion means you don't waver, right? You stick to the path, but you're grounded in knowledge. Those who are grounded in knowledge. It's not based on emotion. It's not based on trends. You know, it's not, you know, I want to become Muslim because I want to catch a jinn. This type of Scooby-Doo. No, 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 no. We're grounded in knowledge. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he's the great Mu'allim. He passed by two Majlisain in his masjid. One of them was making dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the other one was engaging in ta'aleem and ta'allum. 
And he sat with those who were making ta'alim and ta'allum. One was making du'a to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the other was, was learning and teaching. And he sat amongst them. And he said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ مُعَلِّمًا We have to seek knowledge. رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا The only thing in the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to pray for and increase in is ilm. رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا Not malan or whatever. You know, dinaran. The only thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to ask Him for an increase in is ilm. That's it. Ilm. That's why the prophets, they don't leave an inheritance. The inheritance of the prophets is knowledge, sacred knowledge. So this is, is extremely important. We need to seek knowledge. Seek knowledge. Sit with the ulama. Seek them out. Inshallah ta'ala. Jazakallah khairan. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa alayhi wa sallam.